Psychologists believe that one in 25 Americans are sociopaths. They walk among us, shop with us, and might even live next door to us. On the afternoon of January 8th, 2000, local resident, 19-year-old Danielle, and her new boyfriend, 19-year-old Dan, came down to this boat dock for their second date. Danielle's mother actually suggested that they come down here and just talk to get to know each other. They noticed a, uh, a red pickup truck drive by. The white male ended up getting out of the vehicle, asked if it was okay if he let his dogs, or his dog, his Rottweiler run while they were here. So he did, he ended up talking to him, asking him what school he went to. He then got back in his truck and drove off. A few minutes later, he circled back around and they noticed that he was actually behind them. He drove by one other time and then immediately pulled up in front of him, stopped, got out, and was holding a 9mm pistol. The male then ordered both of them into the vehicle. He ordered Danielle into the front seat and Dan into the back of the red pickup truck with a locked cab. He put Dan back there with his Rottweiler that he had. The male then proceeded to drive them south along the river, approximately 12 miles to what's known as Gut Road. The driver held on to his gun and was rambling about uh, he was there to kill them due to a drug deal that their parents made. He was basically rambling non-stop and wasn't making sense as he continued to drive south towards Gut Road. So Badno then stopped his truck here at this pull-off. He looked over at Danielle while still holding his gun and said, you said you'd do anything, right? She shook her head yes. Right after that, he made them both get out of the truck. They both thought they were in the clear. He made them stand over at the edge of the water here. And he started ranting again about, what am I going to do? You saw my face. Um, he ordered him back into the truck when he, uh, he then raped her. Once again, he ordered them out of the truck to stand by the, uh, the side of the water here. 
and right when they got near the water, he shot Dan in the head. Danielle then bent down to Dan, and he shot her in the face and the thigh. Babner then drugged both Danielle and Danny and threw them into the Susquehanna River. Now they were actually able to float and tread water downstream. There was actually a hunter park down here and he saw the two floating out into the water. He waded out into the water, grabbed both of them and pulled them in. A car then drove by up above and he yelled up for them to call the police and told them what happened. Police and investigators from multiple departments descended on this scene, and they began a grid search north along the coast of the Susquehanna here, until they eventually located the crime scene up above. Investigators found the blood marks on the ground and nine millimeter shell casings just inside the water. Danielle and Dan were then transported to the York Hospital. Uh, Danielle was induced into a coma and uh, Dan could not talk because his jaw was broken and fragmented from the, the gunshot. So the detective then had Dan write out what exactly happened. And uh, he wrote in detail what the, what the male suspect looked like, the red pickup truck, the Rottweiler, uh, details in the back of the truck, the fact that he was wearing high top Nike shoes. So detectives then pass that on to other investigators in the area and they're pretty certain that the individual that Dan was describing was William Babner, 41, of York Haven, PA. So they began searching for Babner. An officer in York City actually noticed his pickup truck parked at what was uh, later determined to be Babner's girlfriend's house. So at that point, they, uh, they put up surveillance to watch the house and called out the QRT, the quick response team. The quick response team then uh, set up outside and ended up hitting that house and Babner was inside wearing the shoes, um, the dog, the Rottweiler, Sam was there, pickup truck, the, the baseball bat, the aluminum baseball bat that Dan mentioned and the note was there, the toolbox, everything, all the details matched up. I will not be using last names for Danny and Dan here. Uh, like I said, Danielle was a resident here, and um, I think there's been enough out there already to bring up their, their actual names, not to dig it up again, but um, there's actually been a CBS, a 48 hour show about this and, and countless other articles about this incident that happened down here. But uh, Danielle and Dan ended up fighting back in the end. The way this relates to me is the fact that during that time, I was actually training for my first marathon, and this was actually my my 12 mile turnaround point. Now, I didn't even find this find out that this happened until you know weeks. It was actually I think two months afterwards when the uh, there was an article in the paper about it, a follow up article about it, and uh, I remember thinking back, you know, did I turn around here on that that Saturday that this happened? You know, that made me think, you know the entire time what if I was here what if I could have been here to stop this from happening